around here who has more authority than you is me. So I'm turning the whole, how do you do that? He just came out of prison. He's not Hebrew. I mean, he's not Egyptian. You turn the nation over to him? You don't even know him. I don't need to know him. I see his faith. I see what he came with. I see what God has processed him through. Because he ain't loose with his words. He wasn't like, nah, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this here, little Pharaoh. No, no, no. He had to know how to walk before him. It takes wisdom for that. How do you get that wisdom? By faith. He didn't just run in there to Pharaoh because you couldn't come to Pharaoh wearing a beard. He had to shave. You couldn't come in there looking like anything, smelling like anything. They ran him by Dillard's. Let him get him some clothes. Nice shoes, sandals. And they made sure that his toenails had been clipped. <laughs> oh, that tickled me. <laughs> you just couldn't come up in there no any kind of way. So when he came into Pharaoh's court, you, it wasn't like walking through the door and Pharaoh's sitting there behind the desk. You walked down a long corridor and all the officials were lined up. You, there was a way to do it. Wisdom comes with this. And Pharaoh said, you, I want you next to me. Glory to God. So all that God has given to us as citizens of his kingdom can be accessed through faith in his word. We've just not taken the time to see what he has given to us. And when we see it and hear it, hear of it, most of us be like, oh, really? Because we've been without for so long, we tend to think God is like everybody else. He just lying. Well, I would never say that, Reverend. And we may not say it with our mouth, but our actions give credence to that. So all that he's given us, ooh, wow. So where does, well, let me, his word is a bag of seed that will produce his will for you and reveal his love to you. The love that he has for you. His word will reveal it to you. So don't run off. Don't just read a couple of scriptures and say, well, I had my devotion. Let him lead you into what is you're being devoted in. Amen. There's a word he wants to speak to you, not pre-programmed thing. Nothing against uh, these, these books, devotional books, all those things. Like I'm not saying that God didn't give them. But on everything, you have to ask the Spirit of God, what do you want to say to me? You know, I'll, I'll come before the Lord, you know, and you can go through the rituals and all that stuff, you know. Oh, God, I bless you. I praise you. And all. We're saying the right thing. And he's like, okay. And he's like, are you coming to hear what I've got to say? Or are you trying to get me to hear what you got to say? Yeah. Well, it's about you, Lord. Well, will you be quiet? <laughs> I don't want the prize in the Cracker Jack box worship praise, saying the right things. Look how y'all looking. Well, I never. Oh, yes, you have. So where does biblical faith come from? So then faith comes and hearing and look at the Passion Translation. It's on your outline. Faith then is birth in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So it means my heart has to respond to what God said. Amen. I got about five minutes. I'm going, whoo, wow. Look at your outline. God is the father of faith. So faith came from him. And he lives by faith. He's given us his life, eternal life. 
and he has given us his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith. So God has dealt to each one of us the measure of faith. It ain't like he gave Pastor Cheryl uh, six ounces and gave uh, the second row. Let's say on the first row, y'all got six ounces. The second row got four. And it went down. When it got to Uncle Frankie, it was a teaspoon. <laughs> y'all can, after service, you can stretch your hands toward him and say, that's what's wrong with you. He got a teaspoon. <laughs> No, he gave to us, us the measure. He gave us his faith. Yeah. It's like if somebody tell you, I'm going to give you an apple orchard. You're like, okay. And they hand you an apple seed. They gave you multiple orchards, but if you don't see it, you'll play it down. Oh, no, give me a stupid seed. No, they gave you an orchard. Grow it. We just live in a world where we want everything done yesterday. And if it's hard work, we want somebody else to do it, and we just reap the benefits. I'm telling you, and you may not like it, but that is a welfare mentality. And God gave us a mentality that fares well. So God is the father of faith. From the beginning, he intended for us to live by faith. Uh, in Genesis chapter, you won't be able to go over there, but you can make write a note of it. Uh, in chapter 1 of Genesis chapter 2, uh, you, it tells you about God, God said, let there be, and so forth and so on. And it starts out in verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, period. And most theologians will tell you that that, from that period, to verse 2, millions of years transpired. God created the heavens and the earth, and when he, whatever he created was good. It worked perfectly. In between that is when Satan and his bunch did what they did, and God kicked them out. And God withdrew himself from what he created. Then he comes back, and the scripture says that Darkness was on the faith of the deep and that uh, everything was out of order. If darkness is over, it, it's out of order. It's not, not the way God ordained it. Verse 3, it says, then God said. This word, and I'm, I'm going to read this to you because I didn't put it in your outline or you'd have had a six-page outline. The word said is the Hebrew word amar, A-M-A-R, which is most, most often translated, <clears throat> excuse me, is translated as, in the Hebrew, as said, God said. That's why they wrote it up like that. But it also means to think. It means to imagine. And it means to speak inside your heart. So before God just jumped up and said something, he thought about it. He imagined something. He imagined first what we later found out he said. <laughs> this word means to think. It means to imagine and it means to speak inside your heart. So before, you know, when we read it says, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then God said, we run on to that. But what's laid out here in Genesis 1 is how God operates by faith. It's a breakdown of how faith operates. Then God said, then God thought. Then God imagined. Then God said in his heart. If it's in your heart in abundance, the mouth will. So he said, the scripture said, then God said, what did he say? Let there be light. And there was light. 
not the sun, not the moon, because I think day four, it talks about the sun and the moon. The Bible said God is light. God had removed himself from everything. So it's total dark. The absence, darkness is the absence of light. So God put himself back on the scene. Light, life, love, everything now can start formulating. It can start expanding. Then God said, he said what he said because he thought on it. He imagined it. He saw it. And then he said it in his heart. You ever heard of think before you speak? When you think on that, think before you, you speak enough. You start saying in your heart, I'm not going to cuss him out. I'm going to say good things. Now, I feel like something else. So you got to see yourself doing it this way. Are y'all getting this? It was never when man sinned, it's when things went downhill and we live by fear, not by faith. God spoke to everything. Let there be, and it was. He said, let the earth bring forth seed. Bring it forth. What do you mean bring it forth? It was already there. It was in the soil. So there's a lot of things that God has given to you. It's in seed form. Tell that thing to start growing. God, how do I nurture what's in what you put in me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh. So, God thought, God imagined, and he spoke inside his heart, and the Bible said, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Where was light? Right where he wanted it. <laughs> I'm giving you something that you can be thinking on. You, you know, oh man, well, just don't run the red light in your thinking, okay? Watch this. The Hebrew verbs used in the phrase, let there be, you know, he said, let there be light. Let there be, and there was. Those two phrases are related to his name, Yahweh. The first part, Yah, in the Hebrew is Y-E-H-I. It means let there be. The second part is Way, which is W-A-H-I. It means there was. So God is saying, I want you to see how I operate and just do what I do. You don't just spit something out. You get concrete evidence from his word. Think on it. Meditate on it. Imagine. See yourself the way that word says. By his stripes we were healed. So we'll say, by his stripes we're healed. But we don't believe it. And we think if we say it 600 times, that's going to change things. No, you just say it 600 times. It might take 600 times you saying it to get it on the inside where you will start to believe. It's in your heart in abundance. That's what he's after. And a transformation starts taking place. Transformation means the image on the inside changed. So God spoke to everything. Then when it came to man, he said to himself, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Then he scoops up dirt and forms, scoops up clay and forms the body of a man that resembles him and breathe the breath of life into him. One translation says, that God was holding him in his arms. And when he breathed the breath of life into him, 
Adam opened his eyes and looked right into the eyes of God. God's on the earth bent down and makes this man who looked like he hocked him up and spit himself out. And then he communed with God. He discovered man was created to worship. And so God created animals and brought them to man. He told him, this the domain of my creation. All of this, I'm turning it over to you. I want you to run it like I run heaven. He was made by God, created by God to, to operate in the earth and in the invisible realm. Same faith that God used to create everything, Adam's using it to run the earth. When, when he sinned against God and committed high treason, the faith went to fear. He's no longer under God. He's under a fallen angel who does not have life, is not creative. He can't create nothing. He needs your mouth. And he's not going to ask you to say, say the things he wants you to say. He's going to strong arm you into it because he thinks that you're under him because he wants to be God. Christ came and redeemed us, and what he redeemed us from was sickness, disease, the curse, right? Right? And from fear. The opposite of fear would be faith. We've been redeemed back to God's original intent. That's why he's dealing with us about the first, One of the first things you need to learn when you get born again is how to live by faith. And so it's been a spooky, mystical type thing. Well, I, I'm trying. Well, I, I believe God, but we don't understand the process. And so the Lord is slow walking us into it. When he showed me this about let there be, God said, and to stop at the word said and look at this is what it means. Like, wait a minute. I never would have got that out of there. I just say, and God said, let there be. And then it was. He'd be like, something's missing. And I don't know what said means that he thought about it and imagined it and then said it in his heart. And what you say in your heart is coming out those lips. And when it came out, it came out with the force of faith. There is nothing in this universe that can slow down your faith except you. When you release it, it goes. Because when God said, let there be light, light took off. When he created the universe, it was set in the mode of a continual expansion. And it hadn't stopped expanding yet. So God, he didn't keep sending us a book, you know, 66 books. I got a new 66. I got I got hold on now. Uh, Y'all ain't had nothing in the last 50 years. I'm going to give you another book. Add this to it. No, no, no. When God said, let there be, and it was, it continued. Why? Because before he said it, he had already thought about it. He had already uh, 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 imagined and said it in his heart. This is the way it would be. So when I say let light Light be, everything that has to do with was in be. He didn't say, go for a little while and stop. It's still going, and he doesn't have to keep saying it. It got the instructions, and faith keeps pushing it out there. There are billions of galaxies that are out there. They exist. It's the visible world. We just can't see much of it from where we are because we're in a galaxy. We're just one. It's like, Lord, this is mind-blowing. And he says, son, if you're going to be with me for eternity, eternity has no end. Yes. 
One last thing. Pastor, sure you'll like this. When the Lord bent down and formed that clay, that dirt, to make man, you want to know what was seen that we've been overlooking? The scar is on his hand. Because the Bible said he was crucified before the foundation of the world. He already had the scars. And the Lord, the Lord told me that. I thought, oh, my God. And he started laughing at me. He said, you think I didn't know the fall was coming? He said, son, nothing gets by me. He said, I already knew. But I had my plan of salvation set up. Nobody knew but me and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I drew the enemy in to his own devices and annihilated him. God ain't worried. He's not worried. Why are you worried? Why are you struggling? I don't have enough. And God says, I do. Come get you some. Because all that I have, I give to you. And all that God has is without end. It never runs dry. So how do you get that, Pastor Banks? By faith. You've got to Find it in the Word. Think on it. Chew on it. Imagine it. Say it in your heart. Say it out of your mouth. And let it keep cycling until your heart loads up with His Word. And then you will be one of those that when you say, you already knew when it left your mouth, it's a done deal. I'm calling it into manifestation. That's not complicated. We just didn't know the process. He already had the scars before he formed Adam. He was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He was slain. He had nails in his hand. Side was pierced. And the Bible says we were crucified with him. If we were crucified with him, we don't have a sin issue. We have a righteousness issue. It's not an issue. It's just we're righteous. It's because we didn't know. And that's what the enemy has been banking on. But God loves us so much that he's, he's peeling off new facets of revelation. That's why he says go back over it. I tried to move to something else. He said, no, no, go back over that. Go back over. He said, they didn't get it. I'm like, wow. It's not for me to, I'm a faith giant. I'm greater than you. Nah. You need to know how to tell the enemy to get to stepping. He pull up in front of your house. You're not even allowed in front of my house. Get to stepping. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Y'all receive that? See, I used to hear back in the day, R.W. Schambach, he said, you don't have no problems. All you need is faith in God. And they're like, oh, yeah, I got faith, I got faith. And we add to it, but we've not understood how it works. So I'm here to tell you, we're going to drill it and root it until that seed is anchored and it starts coming up in your life. And you'll be like, Lord, what is that? He said, that's your faith. Your faith is growing. You can leave here tonight and put this word to work. Holy Spirit, give me something to exercise my faith with. And you'll have a testimony by Sunday. Because your faith works. 
It ain't complicated. It's God's faith. We're, we're in a world full of distractions. God's not distracted. He knew exactly what he was doing. Everything created came from light because God is light. And then the Lord shows up in his earthly ministry and looks at everybody. He said, you're the light of the world. You are children of light. We've been afraid to think that way. You are children of light, which means that the visible world will respond to light. So God's doing us like he did Adam. He brought all these animals here and see what he would name them. Adam had to, his intellectual capabilities was off the chart. So are yours. Amen. You're not a dummy. Well, you know, I was a C student. Take, take that off of you. I'm a brilliant genius. Multiply. Ain't nothing that I can't do. I ain't just saying it no being braggadocious. I got a chance to look. When I see Christ, I saw Craig. I was crucified with him, and if I was crucified with him, I was raised with him. He wasn't raised into sin. He was raised into liberty. All of that is dead and gone. He brought us back to God's original intent. Bam. Knock it out the park. And you used to be one that stood at the plate to bat, and they would throw the ball and they get too close and you duck. Now you knock it out the park. And as you start your journey of living your life by faith. What comes with that is the power of restoration. God will show you things that you lost. Stuff you've done, stuff others have done, the enemy has done to you. He'll show you by faith. This is how you get it back. Lift your hands up. Say, Father, I receive your word. I receive your revelation insight and teaching and knowledge. From this moment forward, I purpose to live by faith, to walk by it and not by what I see. Servant.